Welcome back to the Mark Mosey Show, only right here on the brand new Sports Radio 1560 The Fan. And joining me right now here in the Palm Bay Ford Studios, a local firefighter. He's in the Air Force. He also likes to fight in the cage. That's a trifecta, my friend. That's pretty good. His name is Matt Dolly. We have much to discuss, and I know he wants to get after CM Punk, so this is going to be fun. Matt, how you doing today, man? Still alive. I appreciate you having me on, and uh, I'm going to correct you on one thing. I what? I used to be in the Air Force, no longer in the Air Force. How many years did we do it? I did it for four years. So are we done? Yep. Can we go back? What's going on? Nope, been done. I'm out. I still got some blue blood in my veins, but I'm out. Been out for a while now. When you met your wife, was the pickup line, I'm in the Air Force or I'm a firefighter? What <laughs> no. did we go with? <laughs> my, my wife worked at Starbucks, so my pickup line was a uh, large frappuccino, <laughs> <laughs> caramel frappuccino. And then her reply was, it's venti, not large. <laughs> oh, that was, so she corrected you from day one. It, it, was, something, so it was. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. How many, all right, let's talk about dedication. How many times did you keep going in there until you actually asked her out? And she said yes at the same time. You know what's funny? Uh, to, to be truthful about that, um, I actually met her at Starbucks, and this is also oh, embarrassing to admit. Mm -hmm. But to keep it simple, I, afterwards, I saw her on a singles dating site. So I hit her up, and she wanted nothing to do with me. <laughs> and this this is true. Everybody's going to laugh at me over this. Uh, oh, I think it was a year and a half to two years later. I saw her again on the same site because I had gotten off of it and gotten back on it. And she was still and there. she was still there. And I was like, oh. So I actually wrote her an email being rude, like, oh, look at you. Too good for me, but you're still single. Ooh. And then that was when she's like, hey, you should take me on a date. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> like, so there it is. Nice guys finish last, man. She's, she was desperate and she likes a bad boy. <laughs> you know what? We're going to go with desperate. That makes Desert. me feel you, Literally, oh. Matt. No, seriously, here on the Mark Moses Show. You should have just been a jerk from day now one. You, dude, that's, that's what, what I'm been. saying, man. That's now, what I'm saying. Now we got to get her in here. This I got to um, hear her side of the story. No, I, would, no. I would love to have her. And by the way, what? I'm, I'm going to be sleeping on the bed for oh, I know. a couple. Or my, on the couch. You could sleep on my couch. Right. I have video games. It'll that's be a fun. lot more fun. I'm down. Let's talk about your career. Uh, MMA fighting. Uh, I know you did a lot of martial arts as well. Uh, wrestling. I mean, you've you've done it all, right? All phases of, of trying to get here and beat people up. If you think about it, yeah, if you will. My 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 uh, point isn't to beat people up. I just appreciate the competition that w within yourself that martial arts can bring. And like, I started wrestling in grade school, and that's something a lot of people don't know is wrestling is actually the oldest martial art mm -hmm. on the planet. It's just taught in schools, not at your local Taekwondo gym in a strip mall, which a lot of people think that's traditional martial arts. And it is traditional martial arts, but that's how I got involved in it. And then uh, when I joined the military, I got stationed here at Patrick Air Force Base, God bless it. And um, I started coaching local high school wrestling teams. And it just kind of led to where I liked coaching, but I didn't satisfy my need because deep down I was only, I was young, I was like 19, 20. So I wanted to still compete. And that's when I started to look into jujitsu schools and judo schools. And I did some of that. Long story short, I found a combat submission wrestling school that was local at the time. And that's an MMA complete school. And that's when I really started to do all of it. Stand up, stand up with takedowns, takedowns with groundwork. And it was just like a drug, man. I couldn't get enough of it. I was there every day off. I actually lost a couple girlfriends in my past over it because, you mm -hmm. know, it's like it's just a lifestyle you can't put down. So that's and, and one's doing it for so long. It was just like, why not have an amateur fight? You know, I've done gazillions of wrestling matches over my life and everything else. Like, why not try it? So I did. Was there a moment where you're like, because because MMA is really not that old. It's really any compared to boxing. It really isn't in this country. Yeah. Do you remember the moment where they're like, you're like, hey, what what's that? What are those guys doing over there? I, I kind of could get into that. Well, actually, what it was was like in high school and stuff, UFC was obviously big, not mm -hmm. near as big as it was now. But, mm -hmm. you know, like everybody went to Blockbuster and saw the UFCs on the, you know, the shelves. And so me and my brothers would rent them. And I was always drawn to it because wrestlers did it. You know, you had Mark Coleman, Dan Henderson, some, uh, Mark Kerr, all these guys that did it. And as a wrestler, when you're younger, you're like, oh, you know, they're doing it. Maybe it's something I could do. I just wasn't crazy about the, the actual punching people in the face at the time. I was a teenager. Uh -huh. So when it got to the point, actually, where when I hit that stage in my life where I seeked out to other martial arts, like I said, judo, jiu-jitsu, when I found CSW, it was like I knew it was something I wanted to do or try. 
We're here with local fighter Matt Dolly, and you you know uh, Adam Silva, who comes on the show all the time with mm-hmm. Cygnus MMA, and he's a local fighter, or former fighter. I have to keep him local. He's still active. He needs me to say that on the air, okay. so that he still thinks he's the man, all yeah, right? Yeah, it's fine. Whatever, whatever it takes. I'm yeah, not going to rain on nobody's parade. Yeah, um, what's it called? He, he said very nice things about you. Love getting you here on the show. All right, how long did we train before we actually got in there and actually fighted someone. I, like I said, I did wrestling my whole life, and then I did judo and ju- uh, Japanese jiu-jitsu off and on for, oh, man, it's been so long ago. Not a year. And then when I found the CSW school, I trained for seven, eight months before my first fight, which is pretty stupid. But back then, it was kind of common that a lot of people would fight with less than a year of training, you know, because there wasn't a lot of people doing it. All right, what happened the first fight? We uh, were nervous. We had to be. I know you're probably jacked up, but at the same time, you're like, all right, I've never done this. You know, I'll keep this as short and simple as I can, but my first fight was literally the most unique first fight experience anybody could ever have because it was at a martial arts festival. You know, they, they have the Arnold Schwarzenegger thing in Columbus, Ohio, every, mm-hmm. all the time. It was actually at the, when they were doing the bodybuilding thing, they have a martial arts festival. And so for our first fight, it was in a ring, and it's a nationwide arena, which is a huge hockey rink. There's a ring in the middle, and all around the ring is all kinds of stuff going on martial arts. Special Olympics, judo tournaments, jiu-jitsu tournaments, karate point tournaments, uh, form stuff, you know. And then also, right beside the ring is wood breaking, brick breaking, anything you can think traditional martial arts is going on. And in the middle of, the, middle of it all is a, is a four-sided ring, and they're doing uh, kickboxing, Thai kickboxing, all kinds of stuff. And the MMA went last. So literally, you didn't know who you were fighting, you know. Uh, I was told two weeks before that we were going to wear headgear and wear different kinds of gloves. No, uh-huh. we got there. There was no headgear. It was real MMA gloves. And so when they – and you didn't – like I say, you didn't know who you were fighting. You didn't know when you were fighting. They put us on a mat beside the ring, and they literally, as one fight was going on, they called out two names said, you two are next. And it doesn't go that way anymore, thank God. The sports evolved. But literally when I'm climbing into the ring, not knowing who I'm going to fight – I look over and there's this like tatted up, bald headed guy breaking bricks with his face. Oh, okay. And, and, I, and I'm thinking like, I am an idiot. <laughs> what, <laughs> what did I get myself into here? Like, this is far from a wrestling mat, you know? So when I climbed in the ring and saw who I was going to fight, you know, just mother nature takes over and you forget about everything else going on outside of it. When you look at UFC, you get guys who go, well, he's got a wrestling background. He has jujitsu background. W- what do you say for you? You have multiple different backgrounds. Oh, no, man. I'm at heart a wrestler. I'm a top player. You know, like if, if I were to every any time I fight somebody, my game plan is going to consist of what they're good at, what I can do to negate it, to get them down again on top. So when you, you know, I've trained jujitsu off and on forever. No way am I near a solid jujitsu player compared to top level guys, especially. And even with wrestling, I've wrestled for so long, but hell, I never even qualified for the state tournament. I was just a mediocre wrestler, so I'm not mm-hmm. that great at it either. I have very uh, average hands and feet when it comes to striking. See, see, so. Okay, this is the problem right here. <laughs> when we were on Match.com, we must have put all this stuff on. <laughs> Damn it, man. <laughs> no, we're the greatest wrestler you've no. ever seen. Okay, I'm all the right? greatest wrestler you've You're ever seen. You're the greatest wrestler I've ever seen, and I'm good looking. I got a great jab. That's what you should have put on there, man. I, I do have a solid jab. I'll put that oh, out there. All right, there, there we go. Do you go more on the offensive, or do you wait for the other guy to come at you? It depends. It depends on the other person. You know, uh, I was taught with uh, the boxing coaches and kickboxing coaches I've worked with, controlling the center of the ring is how you dictate things. Mm -hmm. And if you see a lot of these guys, they want to stand on the emblem in the middle of the ring because as a judge, 90% of judges are going to look, and whoever's in the middle, they're going to score as winning. It takes a very high caliber person to be a counter fighter and win a round. Usually, the, especially at the amateur level, you can have two people that are literally 50 50 going at it and everything's even. The person standing in the middle is going to win because they control the ring. See, I'm learning here. There you I'm go. learning here on the show. We're here with local <laughs> fighter Matt Dolly. All right, we we're talking about this off the air. Uh, you got the wife, you got mm-hmm. a nice family, yep. you got some kids. Are we still going to compete or what's going to happen now? Well, that's the whole kick kick thing with the whole um you know because for me when i did fighting fighting for me wasn't a career option it was an exploration it was a hobby 
you know, is a, a, a journey of self-discovery, if you will. And that's what I used it for. And that's the whole reason why I'm here is to kind of get some air time on the whole topic of the Ultimate Fighting Championship signing the professional wrestler CM Punk. And when they signed him, I knew instantly that it was going to be the case that they need somebody who has never fought professionally, who isn't necessarily a world beater, but on paper would be an awesome matchup and an easy sell for them. Yeah. You know, and I kind of thought I could be that poster child. I kind of fit it. You know, I've, I'm a veteran. You know, I did military time. Um, my job is I'm a public servant being a fireman and all American dad, love my wife, love my kids, all that nine yards. And it's just, I feel like it'd be an easy sell. So for me, I haven't fought for a couple years, and I, I've always told my wife when the kids are in school, I'm doing it again because I'll have time to train full time. But with this opportunity coming, I put it out to the MMA underground world, and I got a lot of positive feedback from it. Well, well wait a minute, wait a minute. Are we calling him out? Is that what this well, is? I called him out a long time ago. <laughs> but yeah, but, but now we're out here on the show. Yeah. On this show, I know I'm late to the party. All yeah, right, I understand. I, you are calling CM Punk out. You want to take him on. You I do. Think you're the per- and you're going to beat him. Oh, of course. I truly believe that if I were to fight the guy, I'd beat him. You know, no disrespect at all. I respect what he's doing. I respect how he's handled himself since signing with the UFC. He's training full time. He's respectful to the sport and the people involved in it, and that's great. But the fact of the matter is he's still a first-time fighter, and he's going to make first-time fighter mistakes, and I'm well past a lot of that stuff. Hey, I was going to go watch him fight anyway, but now I'm really interested. <laughs> now I am. I know that guy. Yeah. I know him. Well, mm. hopefully, you know, uh, I've made a Twitter, which is embarrassing in itself because I still don't know what I'm doing on it. But long story short, I have uh, actually gotten some uh, f- positive feedback and some fan base supporting it. The mm-hmm. whole me trying to fight CM Punk. Obviously, I've I've what they call tweeted him and all kinds of people in the UFC about it. None of them have responded yet, but other people have responded. They're scared. That's what that hey, is. Well, you know, I, I, I'm I, not sure about any of that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I'm scary, <laughs> but uh, maybe they're scared. I don't know. What's the Twitter handle? Uh, at Dolly170. Dolly170. All right. We got to put that out there. I appreciate all right. it. I, all right. You don't like CM Punk. Like, you don't hate him, but you want to take him in, in the, the well, cage there. Yeah, well, you know, whenever you fight somebody, when the day comes, you don't like him at all, obviously, mm-hmm. because it's a fist fight. But that being said, I don't dislike the guy. I don't hate him. I have nothing against him. I'm just trying to take advantage of an opportunity that I know I would match up and fit for them. Plus, there is a part of you that, like, you know, people like Adam will attest to this. When you have been involved in the sport for a long time, a lot of people are not happy that he got the uh, straight line to the UFC just because of his popularity. It's a good point. And, and, and it doesn't bother me. Actually, uh, a handful of years ago, a guy used to be a WWF uh, wrestler. People will know him by Mike Barton. He used to be a training partner of mine, and we actually got him a fight in Pride. And back then, Pride was the Japanese organization uh-huh. and all that. And back then, people loved it. He fought a he, Mike's. 300 some pounds of muscle and he fought a 180 pound Japanese guy and people lost their minds over it It was an awesome competitive fight you know I was proud to train him and help him get ready for that fight be one of his training partners and now here it is the same thing's happening so many years later with CM Punk and everybody in their mind are just like you know peeing in the wind over it I think it's a great thing like I I'm a I'm I don't always like the super freak fights, but every now and then it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm down for this because it's like Hoyce Gracie versus Dan Severn in a way. You know, you're going to get to this, see this person, you know, just because of his popularity, get in there and do it. I'm excited for it. Whether I get picked for it or not, you know, I think it's cool that they're doing it. So I'm not anti CM Punk being signed. But that being said, a lot of people are. And I represent those people that have been involved in MMA community for such a long time. And I would love to be the person chosen to represent them go in the ring and show him what fighting really is we're here with matt dolly local fighter here on the in the palm bay ford studios here on the mark moses show two more for you i know you're busy man okay um who are some of the guys you do like you you do like to watch oh man Uh, there's so many people that they're involved in the sport now that you know unfortunately a lot of my legends are, are are retiring out like matt hughes was a big one of mine and uh, BJ Penn, you know, is now inducted in the Hall of Fame. Randy Couture doesn't fight anymore. A lot of those guys in my day, if you will, I'm young, but still my day, uh, they're all retiring out. But still today, man, there's just so many talented people that you can watch any card, and there's going to be a couple fighters you're just like, okay, I'm glad they're fighting. I'm a big fan of Tom Lawyer. He fights this weekend. You know, I, I like him. He trained in Central Florida for a while. 
I'm always going to watch him when he fights. Um, uh, Conor McGregor is another one everybody wants oh, to I, watch fight. I actually am not the biggest Conor McGregor fan because I'm not a good uh, crap talker, and he's really good at it, so maybe it's jealousy. But he's he, he's like he's like an '80s Van Damme villain. Yeah, yeah. That's if you will, if you will, yeah. he'll um, be great in movies. Yes, he will. He's going to probably follow Ronda Rousey here very soon oh, yeah. and, and be doing both. Oh, can they date each other? That'd be great for the uh, show. That would be one superhuman power, baby. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, let's end with this. Injuries. Come on, man. Dude, too what, many. I don't even know where what you want you, me to start. Okay, what have we hurt? What have we broken? I've broken three toes in my left foot, a couple bones in my left foot. I've, I've torn the MCL on my left knee. Um, thankfully, I haven't broke my hands yet, although I've sprained my wrist. Ugh, I've done I, that. I have a few uh, herniated discs in my neck and my back from it. Um, just all kinds of stuff, you know. And, and I know it's funny. majority of it was during training and not fighting, the, you know. The foot? Mm-hmm. What, we, what happened exactly? Actually, um, my worst foot injury was I actually foot jabbed. And this is an awesome, hilarious story because we were doing boxing training Mm -hmm. and I lost my mind and I kicked my sparring partner, a guy named Matt McCook, who actually is another regional pro fighter who was fought in Bellator, really good fighter. You forgot what you were doing and you're like, oh, I'll just kick him. What the hell? He was... He was beating me up, okay? I'm embarrassed to admit this. So I panicked with, and the thing is, there was 10 seconds left in the round. So I was like, I'm going to kick him in the gut. And when I foot jabbed him, he was too good. He covered with his elbow, and my middle toe caught his elbow just right. And it actually snapped my middle toe up and off of my foot. So when I put my foot down, my four other toes were down and my middle toe was sticking backwards and i I fell down (laughs) and that was that was end of that day that was end of that month actually (laughs) i took a i had to take a few weeks off was it your right foot my left foot actually okay so you can still drive oh i can still drive i can still kind of walk no but um i can't even that toe doesn't even curl anymore which one hurt the most uh, of all those injuries of all the injuries it didn't hurt the most but it lasted the longest injuring my neck because yeah. I pinched a bunch of nerves, and I would be asleep, and my right arm would just tremor and shake me awake. And it was actually a few months of uh, chiropractic therapy and other stuff before I even got any kind of relievement from it. So I was actually training over in Orlando at a gym, and uh-huh. a guy who is a high school wrestler over there, or high school wrestling coach who is a awesome program, he picked me up and dumped me on my head during training. Didn't mean to do it. Just happened. He was kicking my butt again. You know, and that's a common thing in practice. And I just landed wrong and slipped a couple discs and pinched nerve. And my head was stuck like this for a long time. You know, it is what it is. But man, the price you pay for that moment of glory when you beat somebody up and jump on the cage and a thousand people cheer for you. That's what it's all about. So what it's all about. How can they find you on Twitter, man? At Dolly170 is my Twitter and my Instagram. Please, anybody out there local that wants to be a fan or whatever, you know, you can look me up on Facebook too, Matthew Dolly, um, D-A-W-L-E-Y 170. Look me up. I, I, I want you as a fan. I want you to support the movement. I would love to, you know, represent Brevard County in Central Florida and be the guy that gets the ticket to the UFC and fight CM Punk. Put us on. Put this area on the map, you know. Great stuff, Matt. Thank you so much it. for stopping by the show, and I, I would love to get you on again sometime, all hey, right? we can make it happen.